Okay, so I was just. I want to show something. I'm going to put this on you, baby. Um. So, like, when you have the camera like this, that's like, oh, big face, big head, big ears, like you're huge. And then when you have the camera like this, it's like, mm, I'm sexy. Really? I mean, it's just. This is all this Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, just this photo. It's just, it's too much. Like, who does that? Who wants to do that? Anyway, so, um. But yeah. I'm going to keep it in this way. Um, so, um, I have just made. Well, I mean, I'm, I couldn't be bothered. But um, so what is is? I've just made a vlog about um my boys being back and you know how happy I feel and. If you hear anything in the background, that's my son playing teachers. Um, and yes, I know my bottom teeth are very skewed. I, I can pretty sure I can see that. Um, sorry, my nose is itching. Um, I want to come on here and talk about me and um having aspers what are you doing no baby just press play to it um Okay, so what I want to do is first of all give uh, I, I can't do this. I can't compete with you and have a conversation because I don't talk loud. Did you excuse me, are you listening to what I'm saying to you? I cannot compete with you. You're talking loud, I'm trying to have a conversation and then you're just like everywhere. Thank you. Um So I got diagnosed with Asperger syndrome in 2016 and I'm on the high end of the spectrum which means a couple of things. It means um, right, uh, I tend to have a very monotone type of voice which I do um that's why it's almost like the, the the lower part of my jaw if you watch when I speak the lower part of my jaw mainly moves a lot I don't really have a lot of facial expression I mean my eyes roll a lot but but that will be like from left to right and the reason is because um even though i'm looking in the the, the camera um one of the things is that it's very difficult for me to or, or anyone i'm talking about people who are, i can't i'm not talking about all autistic people yeah I, i'm talking about people who have asperger syndrome which is me yeah um one of the things is they that it's very difficult to look at you straight in the face um it's got nothing to do with fear or whatever it's just that it's a very uncomfortable situation i don't know it's just it is it, it's just how it is um and then growing up in an african culture where it's disrespectful to look at your elders in their eyes when you're talking to them that makes it even worse so um yeah that sucks um anyway so i got diagnosed in 2016 um and i found it very hard to accept my diagnosis and 
where I am and first of all it cost me 500 pound to get it done that's the first thing um, I thought I was dyslexic but it turned out no I have Asperger's syndrome uh, how I found out I had Asperger's syndrome was because we went uh, my husband and I at the time went on a marriage retreat um, not that not that he was actually present at the retreat but we went on the retreat and um there were two psychiatrists there dr cornelius brown and dr um joyce brown and they specialize in autism because they have a son who's autistic um but she's a psychiatrist she's a qualified doctor so long story short the way i was speaking and what i was saying and how it was they were just like she's autistic and i was like no no and they they could understand why he could not understand me but i just thought that they were being to be honest dicks and i was like okay so that was the end of that then they were like okay you know can we see you blah, blah, blah. i was like okay we we exchanged contact details and moved on from there um i saved the money to get my diagnosis i got my diagnosis and i was like okay when they sat down and they explained things oh it wasn't really explaining it was just more like stuff that they spoke about i was like wow like suddenly i started making sense to myself if that makes sense i made sense to me um so then they came to the house and it was really out of um okay so i need to make it clear doctors brown are christian psychiatrists they run a um a clinic in hackney um she obviously still does medical work um but it's very geared towards autistic people so when they came to my house which that cost would have been another 250 but they just did it because of they met us at the marriage retreat and stuff and another thing is you'll see me fidget a lot like i'll touch my ear a lot i'll touch you know it's just it's a comfort thing like i just tend to um well move my hand across my foot like, it's just it's a comfort thing it's just it's um again it's just got to do with my autism it's just it's it's an assertion for self it really has nothing to do with anybody else um they came and we had a family counseling meeting and this is where they basically reintroduced the autistic parent or child or whoever to the family as to what it means and the first thing my husband said they must have been like five sentences in and he was like i don't see why we need to change for her it sounds like a very selfish illness it just sounds so convenient who the fuck wants to be conveniently autistic bro who the fuck does that like why would you even want to be that person because the things that i experience as being an autistic person is loud sounds that's the first thing i get very anxious agitated um i could literally have a seizure because of just just that shock that loud sound that that's something like um uh, i'm sensitive to light um i can't really look people and talk in the eye I have conversations with people, but my processing is very different. If you look at um, a scan, like a brain scan of someone who has autism like myself, and then you look at a normal person's brain scan, there are literally neural networks that are missing. Now, I remember I was saying this to someone um when I got diagnosed, and she was like, oh, no, I don't believe in that, you know, Jesus will get you. And I was like, this has nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus made me this way. So it really has nothing to do with Jesus. This is, it's not, it is how it is. 
And the fact that I grew up in a very structured environment only enhanced my autism and things even more because I always knew what was happening. One of the things I can't deal with is uncertainty. I need to understand and know what is coming. I need to want like you like like and this is one of the things my husband loves to do. Hmm, I don't, anyway, I was gonna say ex husband, but he's not really anyway. It is it's just a messy situation. Um like mind fuck games. I'm the kind of person that if you just tell me something, that's it. Just tell me. I'll be like, oh, okay, I understand. If I don't understand, I don't understand. And then you, you're going to have to re-explain it. But don't try and, you know, um, innuendos, being ambiguous. Don't be that person. Because I don't understand ambiguity. I don't understand innuendos. Just say what you want. And then sarcasm. Oh, my God. Don't. Like, I'm the wrong person. Because... If you're sarcastic and or, or you're being snide and then even if you're doing it in a jokey or funny way and you think you're coming, I'll be like, I will take that shit seriously. I'm like, because I'm the kind of person and this is how I raise my children and this is one of the things people or your kids are my kids aren't um he came up when we were having a chat and he was like, you know, <clears throat> they don't really say much. Like it's not that they don't really say really say much. What my children have a tendency to do is because they get that from me. They will, if they they will say what they mean and they will mean what they say. So they don't really waste their words on a lot. Now, I say that, but they all have different characters, and they very <coughs> sorry, outgoing and funny. Some of them and some of them are just very just like reserved. They just they just don't care. Um. To, to say or express themselves to you in that because they they just like well who are you though know? like Frank Brown Freddy who are you so um it's just very difficult and one of the things I found out about as well when you find out about being when you get diagnosed as autistic when you're older you have a tip baby again seriously you need to just if i have to say it one more time we're gonna have a problem you understand me so it's like you really need to um wrap your head around it because people who have who get diagnosed with autism tend to have a harder time um and it's not just well accepting it that's the first thing i'm trying to say so that's that's the end of that sentence but it's like when you go for counseling or you're trying to communicate with people unless they understand autism they don't understand you because what you're saying and what your thought thought process is and you know everything's very institutionalized you know everything is very this is what we want this is how we want it to be this is what we expect this is it's very you know, in that normal ratio, because in psychology, when I did study it, in my first two years, before I, I moved to law, it was like, you have a ratio, you ha- you actually have a clinical ratio of what is, what falls in a normal spectrum, I never did fall in that spectrum, and the thing about people who, well, have Asperger's, like where I am, is we're actually above above every average intelligence now i have an extremely high iq extremely high iq but i also have an addiction i also come from an abusive background was in abusive marriage i had multiple baby fathers so it's like it really comes down to the nature versus nurture i think because i was nurtured well but mm, in my case (laughs) the nature of how i was nurtured didn't help me because i was protected my entire life from everything and whereas my husband grew up 
um nurtured but he also grew up with this nature of you know you deserve this and you've earned it and black people say it's like like just this racism thing like seriously so it's hard enough can you imagine being me like and this is what pisses me off people just do not understand i am a single parent with five children i'm autistic and i'm black and no i'm not crying i'm not like Ugh. no because i'm not an idiot i'm very smart and and i do understand i'm smart i'm pretty i'm intelligent i'm funny not to most people but to those who understand or get my sense of humor they'll be like oh my god Faye, you made it funny yeah and that, that was funny i'm funny i have my moments um but i'm also you know my autism presents me with a lot of challenges um i come across very self-centered even though i'm really really not um i come across very harsh very um my bluntness comes across as aggression and um you know my inability to read people like i can say something to someone and then they're upset or or someone might just be upset i'll be like you're you're in the mood i can't read facial expressions there's a um a test a test a facial test that they conduct and while you're being diagnosed and one of the things is that you have to see um like the, read the facial expression of the person and get it right i'm not getting it right but you know you have to see if you can read it in order for you to be diagnosed with asperger's you need to hit i think it was like 25.6 or you know something like that mine came out at 15. so it's like no I, I'm, I'm just i'm not gonna whatever you're expecting from me or whatever i just I, I i don't i don't care and now that i understand the fact that i'm autistic i really don't care i actually i don't care what people think I don't care. I don't care what they think about me, how they view me, what they say about me. You know, sometimes, you know how many people talk shit to me? Like, they just, they they, they, they have these sarky, stupid comments. And I just look, and I'm like, Psst. yeah. Like, if I, if I cared, you understand? Because it's just like, it's a second, it's a blip. And then you move on. I have bigger problems. I have way bigger problems to deal with. And this is why i say that i really love and admire and need and want and have the fierceness inside me to be present for my kids and that is because they are being raised by an autistic mom and it's not like oh you own what you say god can do of course god can heal and deal with anything but that's not the point this is this is who he made me to be this is who i am so i'm just over it. it's like you know in south africa when i was growing up and i came to you like oh my god you're depressed you know it's like oh it's not depression she's just in a bad mood no it's depression love it like it really exists you can go for a really low funk and it can be really bad like that that she can affect you like in no one oh my god it really can so i'm not really sure that i've explained my aspect probably i think i've said what i've needed to say in order for me to make me feel happy and understand which is put out there but it is just important that everybody else understands um what it is you know um because it's it's a it's a for me it's a daily battle it is a daily battle having to especially because i work um as an hr compliance officer yeah it's very difficult because i work with a lot of people in recruitment and you need to learn to read them to understand them to to face them to um can try and judge and you know just and i'm just like 
this like literally every second of the day i'm like lord help me lord please jesus please help me lord am i getting this right what am i doing i am so meticulous and accurate about everything i do and that is just the thing and this is one of the things like where it can come into a problem when you're autistic into your home life because you will take that same how you just need it it's not it's not that you're demanding it to be a certain way it's more that you need it to be a certain way because your brain needs to understand and process that and, and then you need to your one and one needs to make two and not 11 if that makes sense so it's just like if if i say something this is what i've always my children understand I, like i've always I, I don't need to say something more than once I understand, baby. I understand what you're saying. And I've told him to stop. Listen, I've told you to stop. Yeah? And you're being rude. Take yourself upstairs. Until I'm done. Really? And Hey! Take. Get downstairs. Take that off your head. If you throw it on the floor, boy, you and I will have a problem. Take yourself upstairs. Don't go and make a mess in my room. So, um, you know, my husband was like, why does everything have to be about her? It's about, it's not about me. It's just that I need it. The way my brain functions, it just has to be a way that I can process information. Everybody processes information differently. For someone who has Asperger's, it is even worse for us. Can you imagine living in a world where everything is loud? People are always shouting. There's always... You don't understand if the person's being assertive or aggressive. You don't understand if they're being sarcastic or funny. Like, you're literally just the odd one out at every single point. You're just, like, stuck. And yet, you're this brilliant person who literally can't function. And it's like, stop minimizing who and where I am. Because people have, a, I've had people in my life be like, oh, well, you know, just pray about it. I don't know, why are you going to pray? To do what? Like, this is it. This is me. I, I now make sense to me and I understand me. You know, it's just, it's very difficult. It's very difficult being autistic. And... There are just certain things and sounds and just things you need. Like, you know, I was trying to say about my kids and their chores. And they understand that I don't say something more than once. Because I, and I'm, I'm raising them to understand that because I really don't play with my words. Like, if I say something to you, whether it's in the heat of the moment or, like, I really mean it. Like, I, I'm tired of being, like, I'm not, I'm 37 years old. I'm not going to be bullied or... Someone talk to me like, hey girl, I know you, you don't know me, you don't like, like very few people know me, very few people know me, so I'm like, no, you don't, um, and it's just very difficult dealing with that, and then an addiction, and then a separation, and then raising kids, and then having financial, it's just a lot. And then trying to find your place in Christ, trying to find your place in the world, trying to find your place in work. It's a lot. It's just a lot. It's a, it's a lot. So, um, you know, people are like, you're hard on your kids. I'm not hard on my kids. I'm like, you should know me well enough to understand what I need from you in order for you to get what you need from me. Because we're a team, you and I. I can't raise you by myself, but you can help me raise you. Mommy, I don't like this. Mommy, I do need this. Mommy, I don't want this. Okay, then I can adjust and adapt. That's the thing about being autistic as an autistic parent. Like, I'm very open to my children. Very open. And people, this is one thing people don't know about me at all. I'm very open to my children telling me exactly what they like, what they don't like. What they expect from me and what they need from me. Because I don't, I'm not a mind reader. So, unless you tell me, I can't adapt and change to that. So, um, 
you know, another thing I found very hard as well was um, when I got diagnosed initially, I didn't understand, you know, my husband used to do this, he's he like, you know, you're, 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 you know, he's like, he, okay, he'd say verbally abusive things to me. But then when I when I got my diagnosis, I realized I am I am an affectionate person. I didn't realize um, part of being autistic. Well, again, it's just Asper- I can't speak on. Ev- I'm speaking specifically about Asperger's syndrome on the high end spectrum of it. Yeah, it's very difficult for you to get. Um, like, it was hard for me to give my kids cuddles and stuff like that. It wasn't because I was being distant. It's just because I, 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 I couldn't not connect. I obviously could because I breastfed my son for, you know, three months, uh, two years, one year, six months, nine months, and then another three months. So bonding wasn't a problem it was um just i couldn't have that length of time like i don't know how to explain it but and then i had to start learning because you have to learn how to create neural networks in your brain and it was like okay start at 10 seconds then 15 and then 20 seconds like so when they would come and lay on me or hold me like i would be like and i I didn't feel calm i was like "Hmm." but then i started learning to adapt and you know one of the things i love is like i was thinking of my daughter and she's so amazing because she has this thing that she does like she will tell me what she needs from me and she will be like mommy can you give me a hug mommy i don't like this mommy and i'm just like that is just how she is and she's just built to be like that and that's a good thing because she has the ability to express herself and anyway my battery's about to die um jack can you bring me the sorry my charger's here but um anyway so yeah this is quite a long vlog but it was going to be long from the start regardless because you know it is about um me speaking on my aspers um and just how it's affected my life my relationships my outlook my view on life and how difficult and challenging it is for someone like me to have to live in a society that's just so regimented and so flawed but yet just thinks so fucking much of itself like really no no um so i hope this didn't well i'm pretty sure it sounded like a rant but it was just my version of being a black woman who has asperger's syndrome yeah and who got diagnosed late in life people always telling me you're this you're this Everything that people were telling me, actually, I was nothing like that. I was nothing growing up. I was nothing like that. I just happened to be autistic. So, all right, people. One more thing. I want to, oh, my God, listen. <laughs> if you've managed to last this long, you can come, Jack, come see her. Look how pretty my daughter looks. Look at her. Is it there? Is it there? Look at her here. Look how gorgeous you look. That light is crap. Come here. That's a crap light. Doesn't even show you off nicely. <laughs> See that? <laughs> Girl. <laughs> you have so pretty. She looks so gorgeous. She looks so gorgeous. Alright then.